interrupt your regular programming for a living figuratively. Special report. Mm. I hate that. If you're anything like me, when, when I was a kid, I always hated when the special report came on because what that always meant was that I was gonna miss a little segment of the Brady Bunch or that girl or Mary Tyler Moore and then I would have to wait obsessively for the summer reruns um, in order to just try to find that little segment again and it was actually forever lost to me. Of course nowadays we can stream everything so like we don't ever have that problem again but that was the bane of my existence as a small child watching TV a lot. Uh, welcome to Living Figuratively with your host, moi, Judy Takas. Uh, this is the show that asks the question, why not fill your home with the fascinating faces and figures of people that you don't, that you don't even know? Why not fill your home with figurative art? Um, the reason that we have a special report this, this week is because we're just taking a quick, quick little break. I've been watching the Portrait Society live worldwide drawing, um, drawing demo by one of my favorite art icons, Robert Liberace. So I'm gonna take my little special report and show you a couple of pieces of his work from my collection and also how his work has influenced mine. And I'm gonna try to make it super quick because I wanna get back to watching it because he's doing a phenomenal demo there and um, I want to see how it turns out. So let's kick it off by, I'm going to take you over here to the place where I eat breakfast every morning in my studio. So every morning in my studio, I eat breakfast here. Sometimes I just open up my laptop and I take care of business, take care of marketing and you know Facebook, stuff like that. Um, other times, I sit and look at inspiration for the day. This might be where I look at some of the books that I have in my studio, which you might remember from Book Week. Often, more often than not, I'm actually looking at some of Robert Liberace's work as part of my breakfast routine. I collect um, catalogs and news uh, magazine clippings from different artists, and Robert Liberace is one of them. I, keep hoping that he's gonna come out with a book at some point, but I haven't seen one yet. This right here is one of my favorite, favorite Robert Liberace works. It's called John in Sheepskin. It is not a work that I have in my collection and I'm very jealous of whoever does have it because it is, it is my favorite painting of his. Um, I love how he did these beautiful sinewy, sinewy arms. I love the face. I love the drama of it. I love the pentimenti, which if you remember from a couple episodes back, that's where it's the, the little extra lines and mistakes or whatever, former, you know, the drawing active lines that, uh, that help form a drawing or a painting. Um, so since I spent so many times staring at this and one of the paintings that is actually inspired is one of my favorite paintings, which was uh, the Winged Victory, because she's got a similar, you know, very lean, sinewy arms, and, um, you know, it was just really a great, great inspiration for that painting. Uh, since I spent so much time looking at Robert, Li Robert Liberace's work for inspiration, I really thought that it would be good to have one of his in my collection. Um, sadly, John in Sheepskin was already gone, but I kept an eye out, and one of the things that I kept an eye out for was if I ever saw that he was having a show someplace. Uh, as luck would have it, he was having a show at the Charleston, um, uh, South Carolina Gallery, Principal Gallery, which is a really, really good figurative art gallery that, that I love, and um, I've showed there myself. So as soon as I saw that the, the show was up online, I went, I went looking through it through the, you know, the online selections and, um, you know, found one that really clicked with me and made it, made it my own. So this is this gorgeous piece by Robert Liberace that is in my collection. And one of the things that I do with this, because it's small and compact enough, I have breakfast with it sometimes, which is, I actually set it up at my breakfast table, which is right here, and use my blueberry that I might have for breakfast, on this little tabletop easel that is actually just a kid's easel, but it works 
perfectly on the tabletop. Um, and then I sit and stare at it. I read it like a book. I um, luxuriate over some of the gorgeous details. One of my favorite, favorite things about this painting right here are, is the beautiful way he's handled the hands. And I will tell you exactly why I love those hands. They really remind me of the um, Venetian artist Guardi. He draws little people like that. He, he has these gorgeous scenes um, of Venice from the Renaissance, you know, with all the ships and different people. And of course, everybody's wearing the carnival wear. And he does, his people are these gorgeous, gorgeous little gesture drawings. And this is the way uh, Robert Liberace did those little hands. And watching the show just today, he actually started, he was talking about Guardi and it all kind of clicked together. Like, ah, he likes Guardi too. So look up Guardi, G-U-A-R-D-I, um, Franco, I believe is his first name. Phenomenal, phenomenal artist. But, so I love this painting. I have breakfast with it. I also love the way that it is framed and it came framed from the gallery. It's a Masterworks frame. That's the name of the, of the company. And it's got this understated elegance with the internal, the gold around the, the picture, which it, it tells you that the picture is something special without overwhelming the picture and you know hitting you over the head with telling you that how special the picture is. Um, so I absolutely love this one. And I love the frame so much that when I had occasion to have another piece by Robert Liberace enter my collection, I got the same frame for it and um, it, you know, because his work just deserves a really good frame. So let me walk you over now to where that other one is that, and I'll tell you how lucky I got to try to get this one into my collection. So here's a piece that's in my collection right here by Robert Liberace. And you know what? I'm going to take off the post-it note. I'm going to gamble that the Facebook nipple bots will not will not flag that it's a side view um so i'll tell you how i got this one back to the portrait society of america uh every year when they have the physical conference not the virtual conference this year which is very different uh they have the six by nine auction which i believe i've told you about that before but if you don't remember i'll tell you what it is um they ask a lot of the really phenomenal artists from the Portrait Society to each paint a six by nine, like a little six by nine painting, but don't sign it, like just sign it on the back. Then all of those paintings are available for $275 each, which is a super, super bargain because some of these are painted by the best of the best of the best of figurative artists. Um, so what it does is it makes art affordable for artists who are huge fans of art and really prioritize it, um, you know, and they're more likely to collect art, but artists generally don't have the money to collect art. So it, it's, it's a nice way to make it very affordable for the people that value it the most to actually purchase it. And the only people that are allowed to uh, participate in this auction are conference attendees who are 95% of them are artists. So um, the catch is with this $275 price, like the, you know, you don't bid and then the price doesn't go up. The catch is that the best pieces, a lot of people want them. So what happens is if more than one person wants the, the piece, um, they have to enter this little drawing where you put your badge these are all my past portrait society badges you put throw your badge into a basket and then they mix it up and then they pull out the one who gets to buy it and look oh it's me <laughs> so that's what happened with this particular um with this particular painting by robert liberace now for this particular painting, the competition was not very fierce. There were probably only about five other people that threw their badges in the basket, so I had really good odds of getting it. And I wonder if you guys can guess why this was not a very popular painting. Well, since nobody's out there guessing, or maybe you're just guessing and you're gonna write it in the comments, um, 
I believe it is because it is a stunning painting of a larger, more voluptuous woman. And I think that that was just a less popular uh, image that people that people wanted um, because she does not have the standard, you know, the standard classic slim woman with enough of a modesty to nipple ratio where, you know, it's like mostly modesty, a little bit of nipple. Um, I, I think it, it was because her body was not the classic type that people want hanging on their walls and stuff. Uh, I, however, think it's stunning and gorgeous. And um, the way he painted it is, is absolutely amazing. And because it's such a beautiful painting, I also have breakfast with this one many, many times too. So, um, so you know, I was very lucky to get that in my collection and she's got a gorgeous frame. So anyway, back to, um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say thank you right now. Thank you for joining me tonight. Next week, we uh, will go back to the long-winded uh, living figuratively where I blab, 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 blab. Um, and also make TV show references. Next, week, ep next week's episode is going to be called Living History Unsolved Mystery in the Parlor. And it's not really actually in the parlor, it's in the living room, but the parlor sounds a little bit more like, you know, mystery stuff. Anyway, so that's what it's gonna be called next week. Same bad time, same bad channel, uh, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time next Thursday night. And now back to your regularly scheduled programming already in progress.